eyes are on the 22nd of January, which uh, will mean that uh, the Ram Temple, the brand new Ram Temple is going to be consecrated in India's Ayodhya. We now get you inputs about how the security system is being bolstered in the temple town. Our next report getting you the complete story. The grand consecration of the Ayodhya Ram Temple is just weeks away and preparations are in full swing. Reports say that the AI surveillance is likely to be introduced for the security of the temple. That's right, artificial intelligence surveillance. Not just that, 11,000 security personnel are expected to be deployed for the grand ceremony. This includes the state police as well as paramilitary forces. How exactly will AI help in surveillance? Here's a quick explanation. The AI surveillance would help in detecting frequent visitors. This includes any common trend followed by a group of people, as well as any other suspicious trends spotted within the temple premises. If suspicious activity is detected, a security alert would be raised automatically, and then security agencies would be able to immediately follow up with adequate intelligence. Deterrence is also a major part of the security apparatus. The Uttar Pradesh police has already intensified manual as well as social media vigilance ahead of the consecration ceremony. Officials have said that the state and central officials are currently analysing what is called the threat perception. And once this exercise is completed, the final itinerary of the Ram Mandir consecration will be released. 38 officers of the local intelligence unit have been deployed. 26 companies of paramilitary and provincial armed constabulary have been called in. 8,000 local police personnel are likely to be deployed. The Uttar Pradesh Anti-Terror Squad and Special Task Force are also on the ground. They are also being accompanied by India's elite National Security Guard. Verification process of every individual is underway. This includes taxi drivers, e-rickshaw drivers, hotel staff and local residents. The guest list of the event is also being finalised. Anticipation is building for the ceremony on the 22nd of January, when the temple's doors will be thrown open to the devotees. Bureau Report, Beyond World is One. In a grotesque act of violence and brutality, an Indian man chopped off a woman's nose over flowers plucked from his garden. The severely injured woman is hospitalized and the state government has assured help and action. Let's break down what happened. According to the police, the incident occurred at a village in Karnataka state's Belagavi district. The victim is an Anganwadi, Anganwadi worker, Sunganda Mori. Anganwadi workers are women volunteers providing services under the Integrated Child Development Services Program initiated by the Indian government in 1975. The union government program aims to tackle malnutrition among all pregnant women, lactating mothers and children in the age group of 0 to 6 years. Anganwari workers and helpers basically provide supplementary nutrition, nutrition and health education, health checkups, immunization, preschool informal education to the children. Now let's just take a look at what really happened in the Indian state of Karnataka. Children at the village Anganwari were playing outside and picked some flowers from the residence of the accused, Kalyan Mori, who lived nearby. The accused reportedly tried to beat up the children, but Suganda Mori, the Anganwari worker, stepped in and prevented him from doing that. And in a fit of rage, the accused allegedly brandished a sickle and severed the woman's nose. Karnataka State's Women and Child Development Minister has condemned the attack and assured support to the victim's family. The bizarre crime transpired in the state minister's constituency. The assault reportedly triggered a strong response from the Anganwari workers and helpers who staged protests. Anganwari workers and helpers are the trained foot soldiers of India's healthcare system. They engage with the communities at the grassroots level and uh, help give a happy ending to thousands of stories, particularly in the rural setting. Their rule is very crucial in giving the health indices an upward swing. Groundbreaking studies conducted over the past few decades have shown us that a child's early years have a disproportionate impact on the rest of their lives. 
An increasing number of countries are designing programs to invest in little children as a cost-effective way to tackle inequality and raise a generation of healthier adults. Has the Israel-Hamas war officially spilled over to the Red Sea? This particular question is buzzing across capitals in West Asia, courtesy the Houthis. The Iran-backed rebels have been escalating tensions there. They are attacking foreign vessels and disrupting the flow of trade. And the US and allies are issuing stern ultimatums. The Iranian regime has sent a warship Oil prices have started to skyrocket, and all of these signs point at a full-blown war, a war that could have severe repercussions globally. Let's just start off with what the Houthis are doing. They have been firing missiles at shipping vessels, and in the latest instance, a Malta-flagged container ship came under attack. It reported seeing three explosions towards its port quarter. This happened about 24 kilometers southwest of Yemen's Mocha. Why a Malta flagged ship? Didn't the Houthis promise to attack Israeli ships only? Well, here's what the British maritime security firm Abre had to say. Let me quote. It, wa it was assessed this particular vessel was not Israel affiliated but other vessels in the operator's fleet had regularly called Israel and this affiliation might have been sufficient for her to be targeted. This is not the only incident, by the way. On Sunday, Houthi fighters attacked a Singapore-flagged commercial vessel. They even tried to board the ship but were repelled by American helicopters. The naval battle led to three Houthi boats sinking and 10 militants dying. 48 hours after this incident, the Houthis issued a statement vowing to punish the U.S. for its actions. The situation has reached a point where Americans have resorted to militarizing the Red Sea, and their reckless actions are affecting international navigation, serving the interests of Israeli enemy. America is the instigator of wars, problems and chaos, and it disturbs security on land and sea. They have committed a major crime by targeting our armed naval forces who were carrying out their official and routine duties in the Red Sea for the sake of navigation security. With this action, America has opened fire on itself and brought danger to its own interests. It will not escape punishment and retaliation. And in response to this provocation, the U.S. and allies have also issued an ultimatum. They have asked the Houthis to either cease the attacks or bear consequences. The ultimatum has been jointly issued by the governments of the U.S., Australia, Bahrain, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Germany, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Singapore and the U.K. Let me quote the most telling excerpt from the statement. The Houthis will bear the responsibility of the consequences should they continue to threaten lives, the global economy and the free flow of commerce in the region's critical waterways. We remain committed to the international rules-based order and are determined to hold malign actors accountable for unlawful seizures and attacks. And as this warning was issued, Iran also jumped onto the issue. 48 hours ago, Iran reportedly dispatched a naval frigate to the Red Sea. According to Iran's Tasneem news agency, the warship named Al Borz crossed the Bab El Mandeb Strait and entered the busy waterway of the Red Sea. What will this frigate do is the question. Well, according to Iranian officials, the 51-year-old vessel, originally sold to the Shah of Iran by Britain, will supervise the naval missions in the Indian Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. The US and its allies have their doubts over whether the vessel will really do that. Remember, just 24 hours ago, Iran also witnessed a blast near the tomb of Qasem Soleimani. The two explosions during an event meant to commemorate the former commander of Iran's elite Quds forces. Iran suspects the involvement of Israel in these blasts. And in a statement issued on Wednesday, the Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi, told a crowd in Tehran that Israel will pay the price for its alleged actions. Listen to this. 
I warned the Zionist regime, don't doubt it, you will pay the price for this crime. These crimes that you have committed, you will deeply regret. And you will see by the power of God that the one who has failed in this field will leave this field more disgraced than today is the Zionist regime and the criminal America. And as this war of words continues, as these attacks in the Red Sea continue, oil prices are beginning to skyrocket. According to reports, Brent crude was up 49 cents. And U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude was up 36 cents. This happened after both benchmarks gained around $2 in earlier trading. In fact, a Reuters survey of economists and analysts has predicted that Brent crude would average $82.56 a barrel this year. This will be up slightly from the 2023 average of $82.17 a barrel. This is mostly because of the tensions in the Red Sea. And that's not all. This crisis has also boosted shipping costs and triggered inflation worries. Freight rates, you see, are increasing daily and additional surcharges are being levied. The shipping time for goods has gone up. There is a threat that spring and summer products will be late this year due to the vessels traveling the long way around South Africa's Cape of Good Hope instead of the Red Sea. And all of this could lead to inflation in countries around the world. The consequences could be damaging because a host of countries are going to polls next year. The list includes the U.S. itself. The country cannot afford inflation in an election year. And this could lead to political turmoil and public dissatisfaction. So at the end of the day, a lot hangs in the balance because of what's unfolding in the Red Sea. If there is a full-scale war, the repercussions will be felt across the world.